Okay guys, today we're gonna to be taking a look at some rad budget blades for 2022. Now, as is my usual tradition, a lot of these knives are not very new, if new at all, but these are a lot, these knives are knives that I think deserve a little bit more attention, knives that I own, use, play around with, and I think are very rad. Now, I will say, I. It might be a little bit biased in my knife collecting journey to more expensive knives, and I do give expensive knives quite a bit of airtime on this channel, but budget knives are fun, and all of these blades on today's list come in solidly under $100. As always, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, check out the Instagram. Your support does mean a lot to the channel and to me. So let's jump into it. Okay, so I have a whole bunch of budget blades here. I'm trying to think which one I should really grab first. I think we're going to start off with the Mora Kunzbuhl. Now, the Kunzbuhl, this is the updated version. It originally came in green. This is the orange handled version. But the Kunzbuhl is a really fantastic blade. It's essentially the spiritual successor to the Mora 2000 with its multi-ground blade. You have the front with a more traditional Scandi grind, and then it thins out, tapers out to a very thin, very flexible tip towards the end of the knife and it gives you a lot of precision and control not to mention it is also stainless it's made of 12 c 24 n something like that i could be wrong it's it's something along those lines i can't quite remember the steel off the top but it is a sandvik steel and it is a pretty fantastic knife it has a lot of the great lines of the mora garberg and it really is essentially the same handle just with a rubber over mold is very comfortable very grippy and a really nice knife to use if you're looking for a thin slicey stainless steel bushcrafting kind of camp knife definitely not the best for survival as it is a bit thin towards the tip but it is a really fantastic camp and bushcraft option. Okay, moving over to survival. I think we'll jump from survival to bushcrafting and camping and back and forth. So this one is the Cold Steel SRKC, the compact version of the classic Cold Steel SRK. And while it is a little bit thin in hand, it is a pretty solid and pretty reliable blade. It is very classic, very no frills, just like its older brother, the SRK, the normal full-sized SRK. And honestly, at first, First, it's still not my favorite, but at first I really disliked it, but it is growing on me more. And especially if you do use it with gloves on, it does feel a little bit more hand filling, but overall it is just a smaller blade. It is a newer one to the SRK lineup. And uh, this one, unlike the original SK5 SRKs, is flat ground, not hollow ground. And it is of course a little bit thinner, but is still remarkably tough and robust little guy. So that is the SRKC. And to compare it with the Kunzbuhl, there it is. It is a little bit bigger than the Kunzbuhl um, as far as the blade length goes. So it is pushing a little bit more into kind of larger bushcrafting camp knives and a kind of smaller survival blades. So depending on your applications, it very well could fit a lot of roles. And if nothing else, you know that this is going to be an insanely tough and durable blade because of its lineage with the SRK. Okay, now jumping into the next bushcrafting knife. This one is the Condor Pterosaur. Now this one is probably one of my favorite budget blades that I have recently come across, especially when we consider uh, bushcrafting because there are so many budget uh, bushcrafting knives out there that are really great. Things like the Mora Consbul, the Mora Eldris, the Mora Companion, the Mora Bushcraft Black. Really, Mora quarters the market on affordable budget bushcrafting blades and, and they are really great i mean it's it's so hard to beat all of those awesome options that i just listed but it is so cool to see condor come out with a really strong contender made out of 1095 high carbon and it is just a fantastic blade it does bush crafting tasks very well and they're really i don't have any complaints it feels great in the hand ergonomically speaking it is of course full tang so it is pretty darn durable and tough and overall it is just it's a great knife i really don't have any complaints some people have said that the quality control on condor's blades is a little bit sketchy and uh, i'm not gonna 
say that that's wrong, but from my personal experience, I've had nothing but good luck with them. Uh, all of my Condor blades, they've been just fine, except they're 10 centi... Their 1075 was a little bit soft for a heat treat, but of course this is 1095, so it's a little bit tougher. Uh, but aside from that, really, my condors have treated me well, but I do throw it out there as a disclaimer in case anyone is coming across problematic knives. But like I said, I haven't experienced them so far. Okay, last two are basically going to be kind of survival knives, but the last one is a little bit of a between both. So the next one we're going to talk about, very surprisingly, never thought I would feature really a Gerber on any of my lists, but I do like the Gerber Prodigy quite a bit. Now, for me, I will say this, that if you were to get a Prodigy, I would probably recommend going with the straight or plain edge version. This one is a combo edge, but overall, the Gerber Prodigy or the Gerber Prodigy is really a fantastic knife. I do love its ergonomics and its blade shape. It is very much a survival knife, and uh, it's not the most fine task or best at everything, but it is very, it is quite comfortable and quite a sturdy little knife. Now, I will say to those who don't know, I am not a huge fan of the Gerber Strongarm, but the Prodigy and the Strongarm have essentially the same exact blade, but the handle on the Prodigy is much, much better. Not only is there more rubber overmolding, it is a more grippy, but it also fits the hand much better. It has a far a noticeably larger palm swell when you hold it and it really does feel pretty darn good in hand so if i had to choose any gerber this still probably would not be one of my first blades but if i did have to choose a gerber this one is actually pretty darn good and being the fact that this one is about 20 dollars cheaper than a strong arm it's really hard to beat the fact that you know you can get these pretty reliably for around 50 to 60 dollars whereas strong arms are running 70 to 80 dollars so if you did have to go with this or if you are looking at a gerber strong arm i would say check out the prodigy because it is literally the same exact blade i put it right up next to my uh, gerber strong arm they are the same exact blade stock uh, and everything but it is a much more ergonomically uh, it's a much more ergonomically pleasing blade not to mention i think that the uh, sheath is actually probably better too but uh, overall the prodigy is definitely worth checking out and uh, this is a good it's a solid start for a survival knife or if you're looking for survival knives to throw in packs you know like backpacks or trucks or something the prodigy is a pretty solid tool for that option okay the last one and certainly not the least but i think the most expensive on the list is the kbar bk18 now this blade once again not new like all of these are not really new but the bk18 is a really solid blade that i think flew under a lot of people's radar and uh, is not super well known but it is a fantastic blade from its ergonomics being really squared away and very comfortable to hold and to use. It has a nice wide blade on it. So that means that when you're cutting, it's very controllable and this thing will, for, this thing will make, um, and this thing will feather sticks so well or create feather sticks very well. Uh, it is a sweet little blade and it has a pretty good thickness of 1095 CV, which is beak or K bar is kind of known for steel. It's a very solid, very proven, kind of tried and true 1095 variation. But overall, the BK18 is a really cool blade, and so is the BK16. I don't have it here to feature, and obviously that'd be more than five knives. But whether it's the BK18 or the 16, they're both really solid uh, blades that are really not that expensive. Definitely under $100, but very uh, squared away ergonomically and comfortable, tough knives that you can use the heck out of. And the thing that I like about the BK18 is the fact that whether you want to push this into survival, tactical or camp life it really is well suited for all of the above anyways guys that has been my list of five rad knives that are under a hundred dollars that are definitely budget in 2022 as always guys god bless and i'm out